well, Republican Congressman Michael Waltz of Florida organized that letter. He is also a National Guard colonel, knows something about foreign policy. He joins us tonight. Congressman Waltz, it's great to have you on the program. Hey, good to be with you. Thank you. What inspired you to go recruit 70 Democrats and send the Secretary of State this letter? What's your goal? Well, it was to send a message uh, to the Biden administration and to uh, Secretary of State Blinken and the others, many of which are all the ones from the Obama administration that have just been bumped up a notch, uh, uh, that we can't just blindly get back into the Iran deal. The problem with that deal was well, probably too long for this segment, but the main, uh, the main problem was it only dealt with a discrete portion of its nuclear program, the fissile material, they had sunset provisions, and we gave away everything uh, with getting very little in return. This letter says, not so fast. You also need to deal with Iran's bad behavior across the region, deal with terrorism, deal with its ballistic missile program, and, oh, by the way, the fact that it's holding Americans hostage right now uh, as we speak, and uh, that you know these things shouldn't just sunset and expire in in just a few years so that we end the program not just put a pause to it 70 democrats on board telling the administration you can't just blindly get back in here here's the thing the administration's going to say all the all of the right things biden's going to say all the right things but they need to walk the walk uh and they need to support israel our allies uh support our Gulf Arab allies and the Abraham Accords. And as Henry Kissinger just said, why don't you continue the brilliant, in his words, the brilliant foreign policy, uh, the Middle East policy of the Trump administration? All right, I want people at home to know, Congressman Waltz, that I'm not trying to be sensationalistic when I tell you I am absolutely frightened for the future of this nation from a national security perspective with the moves that Joe Biden is making. Look, he removes the Houthis from this official list of terror organizations. Yeah. What did he think they were on there in the first place? What do you think, Congressman, is the reasoning behind all of these moves that are empowering and emboldening our enemies? Well, and I'm glad you, uh, for your viewers, really drew the line of how this affects them back home. Uh, oil prices are up, as you noticed, as, as you noted, but the irony is, uh, the Biden administration cuts the uh, Keystone pipeline, is going to go after fracking, uh, and is essentially going to eventually eliminate our energy independence here at home and make us even more reliant on the Gulf mm -hmm. and on what happens with Iran uh, in Saudi Arabia. But I think the simplest answer to your question is a misguided fundamental belief uh, amongst many on the left that if we're just nice to them, if we keep giving, if we extend a hand, as Obama said in his second inaugural speech, they'll be nice to us back. And oh, by the way, they'll be nice to their own people. And it couldn't be farther from the truth. The thing they care about the most is their wallets. And that's why Trump's ma maximum pressure campaign was so effective to drive them back to the table for a better deal, but to do so from a position of strength. Boy, Congressman, I don't know. You give them a lot more credit than I do that they're coming from a position of let's just be nice to our enemies and we all live under the rainbow and, and you know, unicorns poop Skittles and everybody's happy. In the end, I worry that they actually are trying to weaken America for whatever ultimate radical agenda they have because to the average everyday person, it really doesn't make sense. Even the domestic policies moves they're making, nothing yeah. makes sense here, Congressman. Well, there's also a fundamental belief, along with the, you know, the sunshine and rainbows, if we're nice to them, that they're nice to us. Uh, there is a fundamental belief on the left that America is the problem around the world, that we cause more problems that we, than we solve, and that if we just pull ourselves back and do an apology tour for everything that America does, they, we see them doing that here domestically, that the United States is fundamentally flawed, systematically racist, misogynistic, and colonialist. Yeah. Well, that infuses their foreign policy uh, as well. And those two things combined are very, very dangerous. Yeah. Uh, look, it's a throwback to the Obama administration, which is why I really believe this is an Obama third term here. Lastly, before I let yeah. you go real quick, sure. I, we're just getting this in. The Pentagon now says they're going to approve another two months of the National Guard at the Capitol to keep that place like a, a war zone. Your thoughts, if you can, 15, 20 seconds. What is the specific threat that is driving 
this requirement to have more soldiers than we have in Afghanistan and Iraq combined. What is it? I've asked and asked and asked, and all I get back is, well, there's a lot of online chatter. That can't keep be the metric to keep these guardsmen and women away from their families, businesses, and home in perpetuity. So I've started calling Speaker Pelosi Colonel Pelosi because she's treating it like Fort Pelosi. Uh, and this is about political optics, and it's not uh, fair to the country nor to these guardsmen. Well, you, you nailed it on the head. We've using the term optics a lot to describe the moves the Democrats are making here, and I'm sure that's what it is. Congressman Michael Waltz, thank you as always for coming on the program tonight. Okay. See you soon.